Hey party people, this is Jeremy from Jumbalaya Plays Games, and today I'm here with a Kickstarter preview of War of the Worlds, The New Wave, which is brought to us by Gray Fox Games. And if you don't know War of the Worlds, this is basically a struggle for life. You have the aliens that have just shown up and they've just started destroying the planet. You have the humans who are on their heels trying to figure this all out. This game is based on a novel that happened a long time ago. You have a, kind of a radio show uh, that used to freak out all kinds of people. There's a movie in the 1950s. There's one in 2004-ish with TC in it. And uh, yeah, it is devastating. And once you hear that sound, that classic sound of that brrrr, you know what's up. And uh, you're playing that out. And it's basically a, a war game-ish deck building game uh, for two players. Let's see how this one works. It is very, very interesting. I'll let you decide what you want to do with your back and dollars. But for right now, let's get to the boards and find out more about how this game works. All right, we are taking a look at the board here for the setup. So we have 15 of these land regions here, and they're bordered by, as you can see, these like yellow outlines. And then you have the six naval regions where the UFO uh, flying saucers and the ships will move across those areas. The humans' uh, ships, start, start, ships start down here, and the alien ships and their units start right here. If a human purchases, let's say, a land, a land military unit, an army unit, it goes anywhere where it's safe and uh, there's no enemies around. The same thing goes for the aliens, but when they get buildings and things like that, they have to be in a safe area, but one space away from the previous one. So a little bit of difference there. Like I said, if they were to get a building, humans get a building or something like that here, more like uh, here, this army, uh, the artillery place, they'd have to do it where there's no aliens there already, non-hostile area. Um, as far as movement goes, you can move units one at a time across these areas and things like that. You can also, you can't move them diagonally, so this has to share a border, you can't do that. You can move them here, you can move them there, you just can't move them diagonal like that. And that's pretty much how the board is navigated. On the left over here, you see the, uh, the scoring track which goes from 0 to 30. If the humans uh, get 30 damage on the, the enemy units, they win the game. And if the aliens do this, they win the game. And that is the board and how everything moves around. All right, party people, we are looking at a little bit of a setup and how the round works. You're going to start with a, car, a deck of 10 cards here, and that's your supply deck, and you will buy from the pool deck each round. You always have five cards in your hand, and then you have your buildings and your units up here. I have the civilians here. There are 30 of them. They should be on the board already. I kind of put this alien here for some examples. But during each round, you will deal yourself five cards from your supply area here, and you will take actions, buy things, move, attack, and whatnot. Um, we'll start here with these action cards. The action cards have two or three options on them, but you can only choose one, so you have a couple things here. They get better and better as you go along, but then the best one here at the bottom, so like for example here, I could use this for two coins to buy from here in the market, but I would have to discard it from the game. Right here, I can attack with one of my units that I haven't attacked with yet, or I can attack for two, but then I would have to discard it from the game. That's up to you. Um, so I'll start to purchase stuff, and like I said, I have to use all five cards, so I have to figure out how that's going to work. I'll tell you what I'll do right away. I'm going to use this action. I can't afford this artillery, so I will discard it, and this is one thing I can do per round. I can discard a card under the, under the stack, and then I can take the top one from there. Ooh, and look what came out. This is a unit here, an army unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little desperate to start out the round and go ahead and spend four. I'm going to discard these two cards from the game, and then I'm going to deploy an army unit. The army units and these unit cards go to a non-hostile area where my uh, fellow civilians are. And that's not hostile means that I can't deploy it here. And the same thing goes for buildings. If I were to buy a building card instead, and this gets replaced, let's say I bought a building card instead. I bought a building, this card would be removed from the game, but the building goes out in the same place where a non-hostile area is. I couldn't deploy it where another alien is. And immediately when I place that building, this, this coin is generated. So I could use this to spend for the rest of the round. And that's pretty much how a round works. This gets replaced in. Let's say I spent all these cards and the round is over. And then I deal myself these four cards, five cards, and then boom, just because my deck, I shuffle if I run out, and that's pretty much a round. All 
All right, party people. Now, I'm doing this to make sure you understand how the aliens work. They got a lot of cool stuff going on. First, you have the units, and these are going to be the, the UFO. And the UFO can't take any damage, and it can move up to two regions. So it can move on air uh, in, in the naval area to take out the ships, and it also can move on land for two regions. And that's, that's actually good movement, and it gives good damage, whether you use this card for one or three if you decide to discard, or you have this unit card as well. Once you pull out these units, you actually add the, this one. And since there's only two, once you pay for this card right here, you actually get your other alien unit. Um, that's how those work. Then you have your tripods. In the beginning, you have this weak reap card where they just move one, uh, and or they can attack for one, or you can use them for energy. But then you get this one here, you deploy one tripod, and then you can do two or three damage. Um, once that happens, you start rolling, okay? And then I have these buildings out here, which I'm not gonna go too deep in. They generate energy each round. And then you have the final one, the big one, which is the alien factory, which buffs up the power of these attacks by one for these tripods. So now we're talking, if I wanna do four damage, which this building takes four damage, I could take one of my tripod cards and discard it completely from the game for three, and then I would add the attack power for four, boom, I could take out this building. All right, but there's also cool things that you can do just to destroy the status. I've actually put a poisonous fog on this building right here. It would attack me for one each round. Well, guess what? I have deactivated because I use poisonous fog. Um, I could have a ner nerve agent. So I'll play this nerve agent right here in this square, and that makes it so that nobody can leave that region. The civilians and the human units can't leave that region. That's important because maybe I want people to stay there so I can move them over here. I can move in and kind of take them out. Um, I have I have different status effects like infrared sound and frightening sound that allow you know don't allow people to leave or come and support each round. I also have like this one right here. I got to take out buildings before I take out the people. Well, if I use this one right here, I can take I can alien induction. I can take this one away. Boom! I've cleared the, the humans out of this region. I don't even care about this building anymore. I can just keep trudging on forward and start taking things out. That's kind of what's at play here. There's so many different things I could talk about, um, how this actually plays out, but that is a good look at what the aliens can do. All right, so the humans are no slouches. I know some of you probably want to play as the aliens every time, but you can't play as them every time. You want to switch it up, right? So in the beginning, the humans have pretty weak cards. They are basically trying to run and relocate and move, or they're trying to you know whittle away here with one or two attacks. And you can only attack with each one of these once during a round, okay? Uh, but what eventually happens is you're trying to build a defense wall and stop aliens from coming around. And there's plenty of ways you can do that. Now, when you deploy anything, it has to be a place where humans are, uh, but they are in a non-violent situation or a non-hostile situation. So we start putting these buildings down. So what are we doing here? So we have things like the air balloon here. If you put a barrage balloon, which I hope has a mini, you can stop this UFO from coming in there. Uh, so that protects your humans, at least from them. Uh, if you put this building here, these buildings, they protect against tribal tripod so this right here is a fort the fort gives four defense and the alien has to take get rid of this before they can start attacking the other stuff in there then you have certain buildings that actually fight back so there's a unit right here if this unit uh if there's a tripod next to it and a unit adjacent you can attack it for one but then you also have three defense and you also have two attack if it shares the same uh area with uh, a tripod. So there's a lot of different ways they can attack back and forth, but then they also have these land units. And these land units sort of work like tripods, but they do uh, they do two damage. So these are these really can kind of fight back. Once you get these going, they're called army units. Um, they can attack two in the same region or three in the same region. And then finally, the big bad boy here, once these naval, naval units come rolling out, they start over here at Portsmouth where it's safe, and they start moving around these regions, okay? And what they do is, is they attack an adjacent, uh, basically coastal regions and whatnot. So like, let's say this alien is right here. They can't come back and attack, but they definitely can shoot over here and attack them for two and three. So as you can tell, the humans are, they're not just pushovers. Um, they even can set traps. Uh, I forgot to show you the landmines. So the landmines do two damage. So when this alien walks into here, boom, it gets hit for two damage. So there's a lot that's going on and the humans definitely put up a good fight. All right, party people, man. Final thoughts here on War of the Worlds, the new wave. Now, if you can't tell, I really, really like this game. Reason is, is it actually 
represents the intensity and the pu the push and pull, the struggle of the actual movie. Okay, so if you are a fan of this, you know this this uh, War of the Worlds, this is exactly what you want. Now, as far as gameplay goes. You have a lot of choices here. This is actually like a, a war game, and it gets a little crunchy as you get, you know, get better and better at it because the humans have a lot of choices on how they're going to build their defense or how they're going to go on that offense early and sacrifice, um, sacrifice themselves because they lose their buildings. They can lose their, you know, certain things. They have to figure that out. Whereas the aliens, they can get all their stuff out on the board, but everything becomes a bullet sponge except for the UFO saucers. So you know, you put more buildings out, you get more energy to spend, and you get more, uh, you get attack power. Cool. But now all those things, as they get spread out, because they have to go one space, <laughs> one space forward each time, you got to protect those things. So you got to get your tripods out, and you got to start, you know, pushing forward and powering them up so they can just boom. And you you are sacrificing cars to do so. So you gotta use your effects, you know, to push people certain areas, stop the buildings, uh, stop the buildings from firing on you and the machines from firing on you. So there's just so much to at play there. And I like all that, how it plays out. There's so much intensity in a ramp up of every game. Uh, it's not so simple, but the deck building mechanics make it easier so you can just get out there and play. It's just the strategy of how it all plays out. Um, if there's any gripes that I would have, of course, I want a solo mode. I'm selfish, okay? And also, maybe three-player. I don't know how they would play it out or four-player, but I think this is exactly what you want. You want humans, you want aliens, and that should be the good game right there. We don't want to foil around here with the wonderful war, war of the Worlds, which this game is, you know, uh, that that's what this game is representing, that movie, Humans, Aliens, all right? Um, and I just... <laughs> As you can tell, I think it's a really, uh, really awesome game. I can't ever tell anybody what to do with their money, but I hopefully I helped you uh, understand how this game works. Um, I like to make sure people have make informed decisions. And with that, I'll end my preview today. I'd like to thank Gray Fox Games for allowing me to do this Kickstarter preview. And uh, thank you for your time, party people. I'm Jeremy from Jambalaya Plays Games. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe. And uh, thank you so much for your time today. You have a wonderful day. I'll leave the Kickstarter link below. Take care.